Hi, my name's Kimberly. I'm 22 years old. I'm now 23 years old and this is my updated Life in Isolation video. At 13 months old, I had a rare childhood cancer on my bladder called rhabdomyosarcoma and the treatment has given me many late effects including kidney failure, ovarian failure and cardiomyopathy. Then in 2016, I was diagnosed with an unrelated tumour on my tongue which was removed and treated with radiotherapy. The impact of my health conditions and mainly the effects on my tongue changed daily and weekly which I tried to adapt with. One year ago I filmed this video the night before a biopsy on my tongue. At this time my tongue had gotten so sore that I was struggling to eat meals and it felt like it was getting worse. Because of Covid, my regular follow-up appointment for my head and neck check had been changed to a phone call, but I felt like something wasn't right and I explained all this to my consultant and later that day I was seen face-to-face -face in clinic. He agreed this was a new mutation on my tongue and shortly after the biopsy and scan results, it was confirmed I had another tongue cancer. I had surgery to remove part of my tongue and a neck dissection out of precaution in case it had spread to my neck like it had done the previous time. Luckily, no further treatment was needed and I'm now nearly one year into remission. Because I'm in the high risk category, I'm going to have to self-isolate for at least 12 weeks and take extra precautions to keep myself safe, which in some ways isn't too different from what I've had to do before previously for my own health. As I mentioned in this clip before, I previously spent most of my time at home, but with that comes with having to keep myself busy and my mind focused, which this is something that has been a challenge for everyone this past year. The COVID-19 isolation restrictions has changed up my normal routine, as before I could go to the shops or see my friends and go to dancing classes to keep myself busy. But now everything has had to change to online and be done at home. Even my hospital appointments have changed to phone calls or I've had to go on my own to face-to-face -face clinics. The original 12-week shielding measures actually ended up nearly being a full year and with that there was a temporary pause in the summer. After the first lockdown it felt so strange going into a shop after nearly four months of being at home. I feel very fortunate to have had the support of friends that helped us with shopping while I was fully shielding and they would also bring me little treats after I had recovered from my operation. My friends and the memories I made with them this last year really kept me going and whether it was dancing in the garden, going for a walk, having a laugh over FaceTime or Zoom or even the little check-in messages, those are really the moments that I'll not forget and it showed me who was and is constantly still there for me even when the diagnosis and the recovery was over. When the restrictions eased last year before and after the second lockdown we did go back to dancing in the studio for a few weeks but for around nine months in the past year we have been taking classes and learning exam work on Zoom. My advice for anyone experiencing isolation for the first time would be to try stick to the guidelines even when it's hard or tempting to go out and I'd say try to remind yourself that staying safe and well in your own home is a luxury and just try and find the positives. Also finding a structure or routine to my day has helped me to make the days go quicker. The advice I said a year ago was regarding isolation of lockdown. I think a lot of it is still applicable in following the guidelines and having a structure to your week which could be working or going for a walk and doing exercise. But the main thing I want to say is that finding positives is still so important. I think we've all learned and experienced so much this past year and I truly believe that no matter the situation, if you can, you've just always got to make the best of what you can do and what's available to you whether that's at home, virtually, socially distanced or just showing someone else kindness and checking in with them with a message as you truly never know what someone else is dealing with and going through. Well, that's not helpful, is it? You sat right in the way, Gracie. <laughs> Hello. Okay. We're doing that now. We're having a cuddle. Oh, okay, we're having a cuddle. <laughs>